good to be back. It is good to be back indeed. Uh, welcome everyone who's uh, tuning in for another episode of Back For More. Um, good to have you with us. Um, you know, I thought for the people who jump on straight away, they could have the honour of hearing a good joke. So I've got a joke. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. What is a pirate's average grade? I don't know. What is a pirate's average oh, grade? Somewhere in the high seas. <laughs> no, I hope you get it. <laughs> are we talking? You don't. But... Yeah. <laughs> are we talking university or are we talking a grade from A to F? <laughs> <laughs> a bit um, of a difference. Well, anyways, it's good to have a bit of a laugh. But um, yeah, tonight we're going to be unpacking um, a bit of a common misconception. Um, around Jesus's humanity. Mm. Um, a lot of people um, miss this and there's a reason I could suppose that it's hidden. Mm -hmm. It's because the enemy doesn't want the church to understand that Jesus actually gave something for us to follow and that yes. we can follow. Yeah. So yeah, tonight we're going to be unpacking what the scripture has to say on Jesus's um, humanity. Yeah. So, yeah, well, do you want to kick us off in a word of prayer and then we'll jump into it? Absolutely. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to dive into your word, into knowing more of you, more about who you are, but most importantly, more about just what you have done for us, that we may grow more and more in love, in adoration, in reverence mm -hmm. of you. And we thank you for the many layers to who you are. We thank you, Lord, that we get to dive into and explore that. We thank you for Luke. We thank you for the teaching that he's going to bring. We thank you for the mm. Holy Spirit that is here. We thank yes, you that Lord. is breathing fresh revelation, fresh understanding, not just over Luke, but over every ear that is tuning in right now, both live and also back on YouTube and whenever they're listening to this, Lord. Mm. May that you anoint their ears their hearts, their minds to receive what is going to be spoken tonight. In your yeah. name we pray. Amen. 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 Cool. So we've got the comments up as well. Um, we can see it on our phone. Shout out to Ben, mm -hmm. Shindan, Britt, Steph. Oh, actually, we've got Steph behind the cameras tonight. Yay. So <laughs> thank you, Steph. We couldn't really do this without someone helping us with that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, if you have questions while tonight's teaching is going on, we'll do our best to, um, yeah, to answer them mm. and to engage with people that are watching. Um, I'm hoping this won't, hopefully won't drag on too long tonight. This <laughs> might be a, an, um, a nice short one. Yeah. Because I don't, uh, there's... A few different ways that you can go, but I've tried to just, no, nah, we're going to focus on what the scripture has to say on the humanity of Jesus. And yeah. There's so much more that I've wanted to unpack. Yeah. But I'm like, nah, we'll, we'll cut it short and we'll have to unpack s some other stuff another time. Mm. Right. So, I've titled this Jesus, Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Now, Son of Man, this is a term that is used right throughout the scripture. Yes. Um, and in the Hebrew language, it's Ben Adam. Okay. Now, most of you will recognize the word Adam, which actually means man. Yes. So, the first man mm -hmm. was called what he was. A yes. Man, Adam. Yep. Yes. And the word Ben there means son. Yes. And so, put it together, son... Really, it, the of is an English thing that we have, but it's yep. son of man. Okay. Now, the uh, term first appears in Numbers 23, 19. Mm -hmm. and in fact, I've got it here. Uh, maybe if you want to read that. Yeah. God is not a man. Word e ish. Oh, ish. That must ish. be the Hebrew word. Okay. I was going to say a man ish. Yeah. <laughs> That he should lie, nor is he a mortal, Ben Adam, mm -hmm. that he should repent. Would he say and do not, speak and not fulfill? Right. 
So that's the first time we have um, this word, son of man, mm. appear, where it says, nor is he a mortal, that's how it's been translated in mm. this translation, um, or man, mm -hmm. that he should repent. Mm. We've also got it again here. This is in Job 16. It's used quite a number of times in Job. Um, this one reads, Would that a man could reason with God as a man with his fellow. So, again, mm. man. This idea of Ben Adam referring to mankind in general. Yes. Yep. And that theme carries... Right throughout the Old Testament, again, we've got in Job 25, 6, How much less is man who is a worm, and the son of man who is a maggot? Mm. All right. Now, the phrase is actually mentioned 93 times in the book of Ezekiel. Right. And if you go and read that, you'll notice it's most often being used by an angel mm -hmm. that's speaking to Ezekiel, referring to him as son of man. And it, it, it appears 14 times elsewhere okay. in the Old Testament. Um, now, there's a very special use of the word, I think, in Daniel's prophecy, speaking about um, Jesus. Mm. Now, it's generally understood by Christian and Jewish scholars um, as a reference to all of humanity mm -hmm. in general. Yep. Um, so we have another word, mankind, Yes. in English. But if you were to um, write son of man in Hebrew, they would go, oh, uh, mankind. Okay, um, yep. Whilst also, I guess, literally, I'm a son of man because I'm human. But mm -hmm. it also can um, refer to humanity. Mm. All right, I hope we get... We get the picture with that. Is that clear? I think so. Cool. So, in the New Testament, the phrase is used 80 times, mostly by Jesus, and he's actually referring to himself. Right. Which is interesting. Um, Jesus has a lot of titles and mm -hmm. a lot of names, mm -hmm. but this is seemingly his most preferred. Yes. Um, now, other people referred to him as the Messiah. Mm-hmm and as the Christ, mm -hmm. um, whereas he was a little bit more subtle in his um, identifying himself by calling himself the Son of Man, because perhaps if he had called himself at the start of his ministry as the Messiah, well, the what happened three and a half years later might have happened a little bit too soon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to kind of fly under the radar a bit more, he was a teacher and a rabbi and a prophet yes. identifying himself as the son of man. He actually told his disciples a number of times and people that he healed, don't go and tell anyone yep. that I'm the Messiah. I'm a, it's, you know, we're trying to keep this under wraps. Yeah, keep it low key. Right. Yeah. Now I've got a few examples of when Jesus is um, that if you want to read mm -hmm. for us is Matthew 9, 6. But I want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat and go home. And we've got it again in Matthew eight twenty. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. And again in Matthew eleven nineteen, The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Right, so we have this idea now that the Son of Man is referring to literally humanity. Mm. The you know, if you go back and read in Genesis, God made the animals and the trees and the birds and the fish, mm -hmm. but then it's obvious that there was something unique and special about mankind, about mm. humanity, that we were to be made in the image and after the likeness of Creator God. Yes. Um, and now Jesus is here saying that, you know, I am 
um, I'm human, mm -hmm. is making this very clear mm. that I'm a son of man. Yeah. I am, in fact, the son of man. Yes. All right, let's keep going. Have a little bit more of a dig into Jesus' life. This is Matthew 1, 18. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So Jesus had a supernatural conception. Yes. Um, you know, we, as we all know, probably the Christmas story, mm -hmm. um, the angel... Uh, appears to Mary and mm -hmm. says, you're going to conceive a child. And she's like, uh, <laughs> Don't know but I that. haven't really been with anyone. You know, she obviously had been taught the birds and the bees. <laughs> <laughs> and the angel said, no, that's all right. You will conceive um, through the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Mm. Now, the interesting thing is, this is very similar to how God made men in the first place. If you remember back to Genesis uh, chapter 2, mm -hmm. God breathed into a pile of dust mm -hmm. and yes. it became, um, or he fashioned the body and breathed into it and he became a living being. Mm -hmm. So the breath came in and uh, a human was formed. Now, in the same way, it's a little bit different, but Mary is... The bucket of dust. <laughs> Man, in fact, we're all... Seriously, we're all a bucket of dust. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to give something some very hot water there with the Catholics if you keep down that line. Yeah, well, that, that's... You know, what are we? We're, um, I've seen some pretty cool things where you can actually measure about how much of the different minerals and yep. and elements we're made out of. And you can actually put a dollar figure <laughs> on what what's the current trading value of like iron <laughs> and whatnot. And I think the human we're made up of about, you know, three dollars fifty of materials or something. <laughs> oh it's probably a bit more than that. <laughs> but our value, praise the Lord, does mm. not come from you know, the minerals that we're made yes. out of. It's actually the spirit that he breathed into us. Yes. That is where our value comes from. Mm. Amen. Right, so Jesus, whilst his conception was supernatural, mm -hmm. it's also very natural at the same time, because we've seen this before. When Adam was um, the first human, now mm -hmm. Jesus actually says somewhere else in the scripture that... Jesus kind of became the last Adam, mm. um, giving birth to like a new, almost species of mm. mankind, of redeemed mankind. Yeah. Right, so Jesus, again, he's born just like everyone else was born. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh yeah, I've got that scripture there from Genesis 2. So, in Luke 2.52, it says, Jesus grew in wisdom. And in stature, so that stature could also, I suppose, refer to um, um, social standing and whatnot, yep. Yep. and notoriety. But it also could be physical. I mean, he yep. got a few inches taller every every, every year. Yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't come out a full-blown bearded man. <laughs> no, he grew. And, and in favor with God and um, all the people. Mm. And... Whilst we know he was a very special child, <laughs> he was yep. still a human child. Yes. He had to grow, he had to learn, um, he grew in favour with God. Even though he was um, God's son, he even grew in favour mm. with God himself. Right, so Jesus, um, we've got, um, when he is anointed by the Holy Spirit, all right, hang on. So what have we got? This is five, Philippians 2, 5, 8. In fact, you just want to read that. Yeah, sure. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Right. So, 
Jesus, we've now understood, okay, Jesus was human. Mm -hmm. Very clear. He said he was human. Mm -hmm. um, and we have here in Phil Philippians that he gave up his divine privileges, mm -hmm. which another way of saying that is he laid down divinity mm -hmm. and took on the form of a human being. Yes. He was born as a human being. Um, and it's important that we understand this distinction, right? Mm. Jesus, as we'll, we'll get to this in a little while, but he fully walked it out as a man, mm. like 100%. He, you know, um, to look at Jesus in um, the, like, as the Alpha and the Omega, as mm -hmm. the, the Jesus of Revelation, so to speak, the yes. eyes of fire. I mean, yes. you have to understand, when God spoke, the universe into existence within God himself was hundreds of billions and trillions of stars. Mm. I mean, think about the energy mm -hmm. that emanates yeah. from God. Yes. Um, we can't even begin to understand what would happen if you put all the stars in our universe in one place and mm -hmm. tried to look into it yes. <laughs> from any close distance, <laughs> what that would look like. Well, imagine looking at Jesus. Mm. And he, he he spoke that out of him. Wow. But obviously people could look at Jesus <laughs> as yes. he grew up and yep. not be consumed. Yes. Yep. Um, or just turn to dust or whatnot. Um, yeah. As who turned to dust? That was um, Lot's wife. Turned to a pillar of salt. Pillar of salt. Yeah. That's it. Are you thinking uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark with the <laughs> opening the Indiana Jones, opening the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, and, she yeah. turned around and saw the the fire of God come, mm. and she turned around and looked at it, and um, well, she turned was, into yeah. a pillar of salt. It wasn't just that she'd been uh, turned around and said, "I might have a look back." It was <laughs> she'd been explicitly told by the angel, <laughs> "Don't look back," yeah. and she thought, "You know what? I may have a bit of a bit of a quick squiz and pay the price." Very much yes. paid the price. Yes, so she was told not to. It wasn't yeah. just looked back and turned to salt. She'd been told not to. And yeah. yeah. No, that's right. Mm. So, who's ever seen the show Undercover Boss? I don't think I've ever seen the show, but I've, I've heard of the concept. Right, well, can you have a go at explaining the concept? So, there's... I'm not sure if it's the same across the board, but there may be a company that's got some sort of issue going on. Maybe they're, they're hemorrhaging money or maybe they've got very low staff morale or whatever. I don't know if this is fabricated or not. Anyway, the CEO goes undercover. And so maybe it's just, if it's the CEO of Amazon, like Jeff Bezos or whatever his name is, he'd go into one of his packaging facilities and he would um, be one of the just a newbie and he'd be putting things on the forklift or things on the shelves and so on and generally speaking they're incredibly incompetent at it but they're trying to test the character and the integrity and so on of their employees that would otherwise have no idea who who this person was yeah that's a yeah. pretty good explanation we've got a question from ben on how did he show his brilliance at the mount of transfiguration i'm going to pause on that we'll come to that at the end that's a really good question though Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, undercover boss. You basically have the head honcho. Mm -hmm. He puts on the uniform of the person that serves you chips at Macca's or mm -hmm. whatnot. Yeah. And goes and gets down and dirty with the people who are basically at the bottom of. If you think about it, it's his little empire, I yep. suppose, that he's the CEO of. Yeah. Um. Now. Jesus was the ultimate undercover oh, boss. Oh, the OG. <laughs> the OG undercover this boss. This is the undercover boss first century edition. <laughs> In fact, maybe some people stole the idea <laughs> from reading <laughs> about Jesus. <laughs> there is nothing new under the sun. The ultimate undercover boss when the creator of um, everything, mm. um, the author stepped into the story, or the painter stepped into the painting, yep. um, God became one of us, mm. became a jar of clay that he created, mm -hmm. um, which is... Uh, Pretty mind-blowing. It is, and it's a great mystery that was kept hidden 
for a very, very long time. Yes. Um, but obviously this is one big story that God's been writing since the foundation of the earth. Mm. As Revelation tells us that Jesus was in fact crucified before the foundation mm. of the earth. So there's more we could unpack with, with that. But yep. Let's keep going forward. So we have now this idea that Jesus was fully man mm -hmm. and yet fully God. Now I just want to um, draw your attention to a couple of things. So the scripture tells us in Psalms 121 verse 4, Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. Now in context, if you go and read that, it's talking about God. Yes. God never slumbers nor sleeps. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Mark 4.38, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. So God in his fullness and divine nature never slumbers or sleeps. But humans slumber and sleep. Mm hmm So... Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Mm. This is a pretty, this is a, a key that Jesus wasn't walking this out in his divine nature. Yep. All right. We've got in James 1.13. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. That's in Matthew mm, 4, 1. Yes. And if you go and read Hebrews, you know, it says we, we don't have a high priest who's unsympathetic towards us because he was tempted in every way just like we were. Mm -hmm. So we have the scripture saying God in his divine nature mm -hmm. and who he is in his fullness um, cannot be tempted to do wrong. Yet Jesus was tempted to do wrong. Mm. And at all points he resisted the temptation and chose to follow God's ways. Yes. Thank goodness he did that. Oh, because yes. he was the spotless lamb. He made a way for us all to be redeemed because mm. he did that. Yes. Again, in 1 John 1 5. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. Mm-hmm. Jesus, for, this is 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him who knew no sin to become sin, or to be sin, as it says in this translation, yes. that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yes. So we have, in God there's no darkness, Jesus became the very essence of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yep. See, this is the thing where it's like, Jesus couldn't have done this in his divine nature mm -hmm. or in, in, with his divine privileges as we read in the scripture before because then he couldn't have redeemed man, broken mankind. Yep. As he had to have walked this out as a man. Mm -hmm. um, not with his... And, and laid aside his deity for a time and for a purpose. Mm. Why is this so important? I'm about to tell you why it's so I'm, important. I'm, I'm glad you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Because if Jesus walked the earth with his divine privileges, he left for us an impossible task mm. when he said, follow me. There it is. That's, that's entirely right? true. Yeah. And how many people read, go to church every Sunday and read the Bible but they don't understand this. And so when they see Jesus doing things like healing the sick and casting out the demons and whatnot, mm -hmm. and then he says, follow me. And he told his first disciples to go and copy what he did. Yep. And then he said, now go and make disciples of all nations and tell them to do everything that I told you to do. Yeah. You know, they read that and go, well, that, I don't have to go do any of those things because clearly, you know, um, Jesus was, was God. Yeah. And, yep. and, and I can't follow you. All of that. I mean, I can follow some of it. I can show compassion and have his nature. And yeah, whatnot, yeah. But I can't do the things that Jesus did. Mm. That's a problem. That is. Because the enemy doesn't want you doing any of the things Jesus did. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, we have an enemy and he's twisting things and trying to sell people half-truths so they don't have the full mm. truth. Um, 
And a lot of people have a half truth on this issue. Yeah. They they believe Jesus w- was a man. Yeah. But not in so much as he actually left an example for us to follow. Mhm. Like, Cuz he was still God. It's yeah. Like yes, he was still God. No one's taking his deity away from him. But yeah. we're trying to just I'm trying to um help you see that Jesus walked this out as a human being. Yes. Right. Jesus came to show us what it was like to be truly human. Mm-hmm. Right? Not God in His divine nature. He yep. showed us and gave us an example of being truly human. Yes. And then called people to follow Him. Mm. So... Am I saying that Jesus healed the sick, cast out demons, received supernatural knowledge, and worked miracles not as God? No! I'm not! I swear I'm not! The Bible is! (laughs) I hope you see that I'm not saying this. These are not my ideas. Mm -hmm. God needs His people to understand that you know, Jesus, and even Jesus calls us brother now. Mm. Right? We're, he's um, written Hebrews, but also I think it's from the Psalms where Jesus is saying, you know, I've, um, glor- I've been glorified by you in front, or I'll speak praises of you before my brothers and sisters. Or it's, Jesus yeah. calls us brother and sister, and he does that a number of times mm. even after his resurrection from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when his disciples could be born again mm. and they would have the same spirit and DNA of God yes. inside them, we can now be brothers and sisters with Jesus. Yeah. And one day, we too will receive a glorification there, yeah. and a new body just like Jesus Absolutely. did. Absolutely. And that's there actually, that's a key hope of the gospel, the resurrection mm. and glorification of our body. Yes. To be like the angels, as Paul said. Yep. Hallelujah. Right, so let's carry on with this point. Sounds good. Just quickly, what are the comments saying? Oh, what have we got? We got Preach Luke. <laughs> Jesus is the first fruit. Do no, we have any other questions? Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm holding on Ben's question there. Yep. We'll come to that at the end. Hi, Mark. Deb and everyone else that's tuning in, nice to uh, have you with us. Yes, so good. Just wanted to make sure that there weren't any yeah. questions being missed there. No, Carry all right. on. Alright, Jesus, the Anointed One. Now, mm. if you know your Greek, you will go and if you go and read the original text, it will say Christos. Yes. Right, and that's where we get our word Christ. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um. But Christos means anointing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have this problem with the Passion Translation. Where it's like, oh, if you go and read the Passion Translation, it's, you know, the word anointed appears so many more times than, you know, it yeah. ever did in any other translation. It's like, yeah. you're, you're ignorant. Yeah. The reason that the writers of the Passion Translation chose that is because it's kind of more accurate. Yeah. In the sense of, the Christos in the Greek means anointing or anointed one. Absolutely. So, when did Jesus become Jesus Christ? Right. Christ is not his not last name. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Je- well, in fact, Jesus of Nazareth would almost be closer to his lo- earthly last name. Yes. Um, so, let's read. This is Luke three twenty one. Mm. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Right. So, here we have Jesus... Mm-hmm. He goes down to John the Baptist, mm-hmm. and John the Baptist has been baptizing people and preaching about the coming Messiah, 
um, the one prophesied by Daniel and um, Jesus comes to him and he gets baptized. Now it says there that while he was praying, heavens were opened mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit descended um, in bodily form like a dove, not, mm -hmm. not an actual dove, <laughs> like a dove yeah. um, upon him. Mm. So Jesus, fully man, mm -hmm. hadn't stepped into ministry, yeah. hadn't gone around doing any miracles, he's not healing the sick, he's not casting out demons, mm -hmm. goes and gets baptized, and the Holy Spirit comes upon him. Mm. And then, what? Well, remember the first thing the Holy Spirit led Jesus to go and do? To go out into the wilderness. Went out into the wilderness. Yeah. For 40 days, yes. for a time of testing, mm. um, and we see in Luke 4, 14, that after his time of testing, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. Mm. Um, and I think in an, it might even say in one of the other Gospels, um, that he came out healing the sick and doing good and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, he didn't come out in the power of the Spirit until after he was anointed with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and then had his time of testing. Yes. That's when his ministry began. We yep. know Jesus had a ministry time of about three and a half years. Yeah. Um, right. So, let's read what Jesus did straight after this happened. This is a few verses later in Luke. Mm. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and restore and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Boom. Oh. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> right. Now, let's go through a bit of what this has to say. Mm -hmm. So, at the start, it says, He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his custom was, right, he, cut, he did this before. As yep. his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now, this... Clearly, as the scripture is saying, he must have done this before. Yes. Now, go down to the end. He says, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Mm. Now, what did he... What scripture? Now, this... Um, he was reading from Isaiah. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, when did he get anointed? When he was baptized. In the all Lord's right, all right. Wait, good. Yeah. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope you're getting this at home. All right, so now that Jesus has been anointed, mm -hmm. right, he can then go on to say, I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. That's why Jesus wasn't preaching the gospel to the poor. He wasn't anointed yet. Okay. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm. So Jesus himself said that I've now been anointed to mm. go do all these things. I'm now the Christ. Mm. I'm now the anointed one. Before yep. that, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm Jesus Christ because God, the Spirit, has come upon me mm. to do mighty things. Yes. Right. So, Jesus did not heal anyone as God. 
He did it as a human being mm -hmm. under the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. right. And I'll even go so far as to say Jesus didn't almost, he really didn't heal anybody himself. Okay. Interesting thought. Mm. In the same way that if you've seen miraculous healing today, like, you know, if, when you've laid hands on someone and, yeah. and they've been healed, is that you that's healing them? No. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's God. Yes. That was the same for Jesus. Mm. And if you're unsure, well, let me prove it to you because he himself said this. Would you like to read from John 14? Absolutely. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, Ah, uh, sorry, I lost my spot. Uh, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is an epic <laughs> passage of Scripture. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, in context, I think this is Philip and... He's coming to Jesus and he's trying to understand these things about yeah. Jesus. Who are you? Are the Messiah or not? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> you, what do you mean? Show us the Father, or, yeah. or you know, you know, we'll believe you, Jesus, if you're that that you're the Messiah or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. Providing you just show us God, then. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus turns to him and he's like, "You don't get it, do you?" <laughs> but he says in verse ten. Um, so I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Mm. Jesus himself said, you know, I'm not working alone. Mm. <laughs> I'm not doing this by myself. Yes. I am speaking and the Holy Spirit's moving. Yes. I am putting my hands on people and the Holy Spirit's moving. Yeah. And another great example of this is when people were touching him to be healed. Mm -hmm. he, his will was basically taken out of the whole situation. Yeah. Because he wasn't even aware. Um, well, sorry. He wasn't it, consciously it, putting his hands on people yes. and saying be healed. Yeah. People, that woman with the issue of blood came yes. and grabbed the hem of mm -hmm. his garment. Yeah. And she was healed instantly. Yes. Why? Because the father in Jesus wanted to heal her. Yes. And responded to her faith. Yeah. Yes. Even though Jesus was... You know, he's walking somewhere. Yes, but it did, does say that he felt virtue flow yes. from him. Yes. So, yeah. so he felt the power go out. Yeah. But it's almost like in that instance he wasn't he wasn't controlling the power. The yeah. power was coming from a different... Yes. Really coming from a different mind. Yes. Really? Yeah. It was the mind of the Holy Spirit. Mm. That's good. Right. So, Jesus was a glove. <laughs> another analogy, a Luke call analogy, I love it's it. Another... <laughs> Jesus was a glove. Alright, so, the thing about a glove is, it's really made for a hand to go in it. Mm -hmm. It's like a second skin, mm. I suppose. And it really only takes its shape um, when you put a hand in it. Now, yes. a glove, you know, it doesn't make a great um, bread knife. <laughs> no. <laughs> or whatever. A oh, some people use them for a balloon. Yeah. They're still not the greatest thing to use for a balloon. Yeah. Um, really, they're made for a hand to go inside it. Yeah. And the picture that I want to make is humans were always made for God to be inside us. Yes. All right. The breath, the spirit of God, we were always made for union and mm -hmm. intimacy and co-laboring and being, you know, um, moved and led by Him. Jesus was the perfect glove, mm. right? Everything Jesus did, the God the Father was saying. Everything um, 
everything that he did was because God was leading him, guiding him, directing him, speaking yes. to him. All right. So if you want to see what the Father has to say about a situation, yeah. go and see what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what the Father would want to do in a situation, go and see what Jesus did. Yes. Um, now, what's the great problem with all um, in the world at the moment? All right, you might have a bit of a laugh here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the great problem. <laughs> A devil, a devil with French fries. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not French fries. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's supposed to be the devil. <laughs> he's wearing gloves. Yes. Um, now, the, unfortunately, that's because people have chosen to be led and influenced by him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. By living by their own desires. Yeah. I think in Galatians it talks about being. Coming, coming back under the elemental spirits of the world that once controlled you. Mm. Um, so much of the world has, you know, their glove, their their skin yeah. that they're wearing is just as an instrument of evil. They don't yes. even know it because yeah. they're totally living for themselves and living self-centered. Mm. Um, Jesus came to show us that no humans were made to be a skin on, on God's spirit um, and obviously made a way mm. through the cross for God the spirit to come back inside us Hallelujah. so that we can start being influenced and led and driven by his spirit mm. and not the spirit of Satan Yes, um, that we were once bound by. So good. So we too can do the things Jesus did. Yes. If we will um, let ourselves be moved by God. Yeah. Right? God, God the Spirit hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Right. The Bible says that God, you know, it stays the same. Mm -hmm. We're in the same covenant that was put in place by the blood of Jesus um, just over two thousand, or no, just under two thousand years ago. Yep. We're under the same covenant. The Holy Spirit hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit that healed through the hands of Paul, through the hands of Peter, through the hands of Stephen, he's still very interested about casting out demons mm -hmm. and healing people and preaching the gospel and, and healing the brokenhearted. Everything that Jesus said he was anointed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually because the same anointing came on his disciples yes. to preach the gospel. To yeah. heal the brokenhearted, to mm. set the captives free. That same Christos um, came on those 120 believers in the upper room. But the good news is, that wasn't just for them. Mm -hmm. When Peter got up and preached, he said, That gift was, is the promise of the Father. It was for you and for your children and all who are far off. Yes. Even... 2,000 years ago mm. in Bendigo, Central Victoria. Mm -hmm. God wants the gospel to be proclaimed. Um, the captives set free. The brokenhearted healed. He, he, God's the same. Mm. right? God's mission hasn't changed, but sometimes our willingness to be a glove on His hand, that we find that really hard. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a bit of a joke about people being glass on the hand of Satan. But the reality is, even a lot of Christians are still in that spot mm. where they're more influenced by what the devil says and what the devil thinks. Just like, do you remember when um, Peter was talking with Jesus and he's just had the revelation of Jesus being the Christ? Yeah. And Jesus says, well done. Yeah. I'm going to build my church on that thing you just said. Yeah. And then he turns around and because Peter comes to him when Jesus says, oh, I'm actually about to be crucified. And he's like, yeah. no, how could you, you know, yeah. let that happen? And, and Jesus says, you're thinking like a man, but he first says, get behind me, yeah. Satan. Yes. You're thinking like a man, not as how God thinks. Mm -hmm. You know, the glove, you know, the hand in your glove at the moment is not God. Yeah. Um, you're trying to disrupt the whole plan of God that's been in motion for, since the foundation of the earth. Yes. So, hopefully there's somewhere in Scripture that tells us, well, how do we 
get out, um, you know, remove the hand that's in our glove so that God's hand can come in? That's a very good question. Well, maybe there is. Let's have a look in Mark chapter 9, verse 25 to 29. If you want to read, mm. please. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, This kind can only come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Right. Now, I probably should have given you a little bit of a run-up into this story, but basically we've just read from the middle of this story where Jesus has come down mm -hmm. from the Mount Transfiguration and he expects the nine apostles that he left down the mountain to have basically nine healing and deliverance lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, he's put his hands upon them. They've been anointed by Jesus to set the captives free, to preach the gospel. Um, he's basically training them and getting them ready for what life's going to be like when he's gone yeah. soon. But instead of finding nine healing and deliverance lines, he finds that people are squabbling and arguing mm -hmm. and... Um, because they can't get this particular spirit out of this young boy. Yes. And the father comes up to him and, and Jesus is like, what's going on? And he explains. And he says, oh, can you help me? And now it's really interesting. Jesus didn't say, oh, actually, the reason that my guys can't get this demon out is because it's not the father's time. Mm -hmm. He didn't say it's because, yeah. oh, it's not God's will to heal your boy. Mm -hmm. All the stuff... All the garbage, I'll say, yeah. that people spit out today. Yeah. Um, he says, bring the boy to me. I'm going to deal with this thing. Come on. And as we just read, Jesus took him by the hand um, and lifted him up. Oh, hang on. Yeah, and yeah, he, oh, he, yeah, rebu he rebuked the unclean spirit. Yeah. Saying, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him. And then it left, responded to Jesus, but didn't respond to his disciples. Yes. So, this is a really key scripture in understanding, well, what's the will of God? If Jesus only came to reveal the will of God, and he only did what he saw the Father doing, and only said what he heard the Father say, in this experience, we have someone who's not being healed by a disciple, but is being healed by the Lord. Yes. And I don't know about you, but we've seen a lot of that in our experience where you've, yeah. you've seen something happen over here but you haven't seen it over here and sometimes we can make a lot of excuses as to why we didn't see the mountain move but Jesus still said if you spoke to the mountain with faith and did not doubt in your heart yeah. you'd see the mountain move Yeah. and in this circumstance we see the mountain move because Jesus yeah. was full of faith and had no unbelief Yes. his glove was fully you know controlled by the spirit of the living God. Yes. But his disciples were not. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end, the disciples come to Jesus and ask him, well, why couldn't we cast this demon out? Mm. And I think, I believe, Jesus gives his guys two very powerful keys yeah. as to why this thing didn't come out. He said to them, um, it can only come out through prayer and fasting. Now, the interesting thing is, did Jesus go and pray and fast before he rebuked the demon? Well, no. No, what did he do? He just went and rebuked the demon. Why could Jesus then cast it out? Well, because Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit, but Jesus was, he, the lifestyle that he led was one of continual prayer, and he incorporated fasting as part of that as well. Yeah. So he was in constant communication and communion with the Spirit that was inside of him. Yeah, absolutely. See, Jesus was already living a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Mm. That's why he didn't need to go mm. and pray and fast until the demon left. Yes. 
Yeah. Otherwise, that would just it'd be the story would be totally incoherent if that's yes. what Jesus was saying. But that's not what he's saying. Yeah. He's telling his guys the reason you couldn't move this thing is because you're not praying and fasting. Yeah. Um, and really, this is a key as like fasting t- takes your hand or takes the hand of the flesh. Mm-hmm. And the enemy and everything else that's trying to destroy you and corrupt you. Yeah. Fasting kills that. Yes. Prayer connects you to God Mm -hmm. and lets the hand of God come into you. That's what Jesus is saying to his guys. Yeah. The reason that Jesus could move it and they couldn't is Mm -hmm. because they were not completely... In alignment. In alignment with the will and the spirit of God. Yes. And that's a key for us today. Mm Mm-hmm. Come on. If you want to go and do the things Jesus did, then you're going to have to remove the hand of the enemy from every part of your life, just like Jesus did, and be fully surrendered and submitted to God. Because I tell you what, heaven is looking for people that are sold out. Mm. I, I reckon there are angels there that they're watching across the earth, just like the eyes of the Lord are out watching across the earth, looking for, okay, who's pressing in? Who... You know, who am I going to go um, come behind when they speak? There's mm. going to be signs and wonders. Because I'm only looking for people that have paid the cost. Mm. Otherwise, it'd be very boring as a healing angel standing around <laughs> someone that never prayed for healing. Yeah. Which could be one of the reasons why lots of people say, I prayed like a thousand times before someone got healed. Mm-hmm. Um, which, yeah, maybe... Because the, there's obviously an element of angels interact with us yes. just like they interacted with jesus you can read jesus had angels come ascending and descending on him and ministering to him and strengthening him mm-hmm. as a man yes mind you uh-huh. if jesus needed that well then maybe we needed too mm-hmm. hebrews yep. talks about angels being uh, ministering spirits sent to render service unto those we're going to inherit salvation. Now, Isaac, are you going to inherit salvation? Amen. Yes, I am. So does that mean that there are going to be angels sent to minister to your needs? Yes, there are. Praise the Lord. Come on. Isn't that people are yes. so blinded by this yes. because the enemy has hoodwinked them. Mm. And I'm hoping that I'm doing a decent job of, of taking the blinders off your eyes tonight. Yeah, crack that, it open. Um, so we find ourselves... Um, like Peter, oh sorry, no, this wouldn't have been Peter, this would have been the other apostles. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't move the demon, and Jesus comes and says, well, actually, you could have, but the reason is. And if you read in another account, I think it's in Matthew, he says it's because of your unbelief. Yeah. And your wrong belief, disbelief, all that junk that's happening in the yes. realm of, the, if you, of your soul and spirit yep. that needs to get purged out. Yes. Well, we've nearly come to an end of tonight. Um, how are we going for time? Are there any more questions? Some good question. Hi, Riley. Thanks for tuning in. So, I thought I could leave us with the mission statement, mission statement of a Christian. Okay. Because I think this is really encouraging. Mm-hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm-hmm. Because he has anointed me. Now, he anointed me about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it is to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in each of you believers. Yes. And he is very interested in in guiding your life and influencing you to do the things Jesus did and actually even greater, as Jesus said. Yeah. Now, let's quickly... I'll have a go at answering your question here, Ben. Yeah. He asked about... So, Jesus obviously being fully human looks yes. very different at his transfiguration. Mm. I'm going to give one answer. One is this whole thing is a visionary experience where you have the realm of the spirit opened up. Yeah. You have Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus and 
the the cloak of humility of the human body, I suppose, that was covering Jesus was unveiled. Yeah. And his soul and spirit in all its glory was revealed. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one answer, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um, as to how Jesus could be fully human and yet experience such a transfiguration. Yes. Um no, do you have enough? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, the, the Jesus, because he walked a perfect life, the, the, he took on sin on the cross. Right? And so he had, he had to, that's when, the, like you said, the, the sort of the, the darkness or the gunk and sin came on and died with, with him. Yeah. Then he rose again. Then he had his redeemed body. But at that point, so he was walking through life completely sinless in his, in his body. So that's, that is why we need new bodies. Yeah. Because these bodies here have been... Wait, while our spirits and uh, we are um, we're washed by the blood of Jesus, we're renewed. We still need that new body. We need to be this this body, this carnal body, to die, and like Jesus, to get our restored, redeemed bodies that have not been tarnished at all mm. by sin. But Jesus, having been in a body that was never had never touched sin, so he was able to, like you said, lift the veil and his full the full glory, glory of the Lord. So again, that's that's my take on it and that's where you kind of go back well what did adam look like in the garden there's Mm. theories that potentially adam and eve were light beings yes they were naked yes but completely covered you know overshadowed by the glory of god Mm. to the point where they just they their whole body and being just glowed because as jesus taught his disciples god is light yes and humans if we were made in His image and we were made primarily to be spirit beings, yep. um, God breathed the spirit first, then, um, then, yeah, that's kind of what's happening with Jesus. Is He's a light being. Yeah. He's been walking around in a... Actually, in the same body that you or I are given. Yeah. Actually, in a almost a corrupt... The corrupted human body mm. that became sin and it was... And became the curse of sin and mm. was dealt with on the cross mm. and then he got fully makeover redeemed body yeah um that he still has yes and you can actually go and read where he is right now he's seated in the heavenly places at the mm. right hand of the father yes as a as a man mm-hmm. in his redeemed body yeah come on and one day one day we too will join him oh, and i just yeah. we can't even begin to think or imagine what that's going to be like. Yeah. But I tell you what, you don't know who you are. <laughs> you don't understand who God has made you to be. Mm. God has freely given us all things. He didn't even withhold his own son. Mm. That's how much he loves us. And that's and the plan that he has for us is eternal and it's huge. You, you know, eternity, I'm looking forward to eternity. I cannot wait to leave this place. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. to die is gain. Yes. To go be with the Lord. And I hope that you too look forward to that with as much excitement um, as I and many others in this community do. Mm. And we hope that the Lord comes quickly. Yes. Because <laughs> then we won't have to experience the pain of death and we'll get changed in an instant. Yep. Hallelujah. Right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I think we should close in a quick word of prayer. And I actually, I hope you stick around just for the next minute as we pray. Because I want you guys to pray with us, those that are watching. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for our state. Yes. And we need to pray for our leaders. Mm -hmm. And we need to pray for the body of Christ. Yes. Um, So, yeah, Isaac and I, we're just going to finish with a word of prayer. Um, And, yeah, pray along with us. Add your agreement. Mm. Yeah. Um, if you pray in tongues, speak in tongues, because some of the most effective and powerful things are said when the Spirit takes over, because He knows more than what we do yes. in these situations. <laughs> mm. So, Lord God, we come before You um, in our authority as sons and daughters of God. Yes, Father. And we come to ask You to move in our state mm. on behalf of its people. God, we pray that this disease and this virus would be banished from our lands, that it would be 
that we would be healed. Mm. And God, we pray that wisdom uh, and understanding and heaven's wisdom and understanding would be given to the leaders of our state. Mm. God, we pray that, um, especially for Dan Andrews and yes, his Lord. family, as they've been coming under um, huge personal attack, Lord, they may mm. be ignorant as to the things that they're doing. We just pray that mercy and peace would surround them but, and that you would give them an encounter with you, Lord, that you would mm. come in a dream or a vision and just and, and show them the reality of what's going on. And give them the strategy to lead our state out of this crisis. Lord, we know mm. that families are suffering, people are suffering, and, and the state of our economy is getting torn to shreds. And Lord, mm. this needs to come to an end. This needs to stop. So God, we just ask that you would move in our state. And yes, first and Lord. foremost, that you would move through a pouring out of your Spirit mm. upon your sons and daughters, a fresh baptism of fire mm. across the entire body of yes, Christ, Lord. that we would stand up and be witnesses to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because mm. we know that change is going to come from the government, but the best change is going to come when the hearts of the people are turned back to the Lord and as the scripture says if we will humble ourselves and repent and pray that you will move and you will heal our lands mm. yes. yeah father there are many in the state at the moment that we've current the the recent news about the current state of uh, restrictions and the roadmap Lord there are many that are angry that are frustrated there are small business owners Lord that are scared that are worried there's so many things being thrown around so much angst so much anger so much confusion lord father mm. that there's been hope that's been placed on that next uh, just that next that next set of restrictions and things will be lifted or that next thing of cases that when it drops this is going to happen and lord where people have put their mm. hope in the wrong things lord may you shift their hearts to put their hope in you and you alone lord Father, in the, in the hurt, in the anguish of mm. the people that have not been able to see loved ones and families, of businesses, Lord, that have crumbled, of economic collapse, of whatever is going on in people's minds, Lord, wherever they have stuck their hope, may they fix it on you, yes, Lord. Lord. May Amen. you turn their hearts to you. As Luke prayed, Lord, may you pour out your spirit, Lord. Yes. Pour it out on all flesh in Victoria, Amen. Lord, that people will see visions, people will have dreams, Amen. people yes. will turn to you, Lord, that this will not be something that the enemy can use to draw people further into despair, into depression, into suicide, Lord. We come against yes. that Amen. spirit of suicide that is plaguing this state right yeah. now, Lord. Amen. We bind it. We ask that your angels will come and minister to those, yeah. that you will draw people who are in that position yes, close to Lord. those who are going to be able to preach your word, preach your gospel, minister to their spirit, Lord, that they may find freedom, Father. Yes, mm. Lord God. And we just pray for the body of Christ and its leaders right now that we just need a, a fresh word from you, mm. Holy Spirit, about how we are to navigate this season, mm. how we are to, um, to be obedient to the Lord because we recognize that we know we, although we live in Victoria, we are citizens of a different kingdom mm, and we live by a different set of rules and we're mm. accountable to your leading and, yes. and your rules at the end of all this. And Lord, we just need your wisdom about how to gather to be the church, mm. about how to come together to pray and worship in the midst of all these restrictions. Lord, we, we just pray that you would um, speak to individual leaders and give them individual conviction about what they need to do. And it might be different for different churches and who are at a different, you know, there are different churches right across the state and they have different mission statements from you and different anointings on them. But Lord, yeah, we just pray mm. that you would speak to each individual leader of a church in our state and that you would give them wisdom and understanding and that they would be protected and shielded from the, from the schemes of the evil one yes. against them. And we just pray that there would be a softening of the hearts of your people, mm. that 
that when people do things differently to how they would, that there would just be a unity and an understanding um, in the body of Christ and that it wouldn't cause more division than is already yes, going yeah. out. We pray this in the name of the Son of God. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. Thanks for joining in, guys. Yeah. And um, we'll be back for more next we'll week. Be. Yes, we with will. Isaac. That's right. And not just back for more next week, but tomorrow night we have got Braden Johnson. He's going to be in the seat here, one of our first year greenies. And the following night, we don't have Friday Night Fire this Friday, but we do have Kim is going to be taking a seat here and bringing another teaching. So we've got Braden tomorrow night, Kim Friday night, yeah. and we've got plenty more in the weeks to come. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And good night. Thanks Bless for tuning you. in. See ya. <laughs>